The Flip Wilson Show. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am pianist Asaf Adonai. This clip you saw just now is of a comedian from the past named Flip Wilson. He, he had his own variety show, and we're going to be talking about Flip Wilson a little bit later on in this segment of Musical Notes. And for now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Scott Ramph and Noel McAvoy. Hey, everybody. Good Welcome morning. to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph. I'm also your host, Noel McAvoy, and that was a lovely intro done by our pianist, Asaph Adonai. Thank you, Asaph. My pleasure. That was great. Yeah, and then, you know, mix it up. Uh, happy Wednesday, everyone. As you guys can tell by these fabulous greens, tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day. Yep. So I you all is in a are... green sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, you, don't, you don't really want to eat unless it's like St. Patrick's Day, but if you have a green sandwich any time, other time of the year, you probably should um, throw it away. Go, sure. go to the hospital. Super sketchy. Don't eat green sandwiches. Yeah. 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 Unless you want to, unless you want to go to the hospital. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless you like the hospital. Unless you're, <laughs> I don't know. Don't do that. I like hanging out hospitals all the time. I love the hospital. I love it. So cool. <laughs> That's why I live across from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, it's our favorite new hangout. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, the drink. weather is uh, oh. looking um, pretty snowy throughout the week, even though it's been fairly nice with a uh, nippy. In, it's been nippy in the air. Yes, it's but, been chilled. But yeah. it hasn't really snowed as much as the weather has been saying that it's supposed to snow. But apparently there's a 50 to a 80% chance of snow happening today. And of course it'll increase to about a 70 and then down to 40% tonight. Um, you have a chance of 42 degrees is your high today. Your low is uh, 26 degrees. And Thursday your high is 41 and your low is 21. And of course Friday you can expect a nice sunny day, um, hopefully through the weekend. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's a nice warm weekend for everyone. And, um, you know, if it's snowing down here and raining down here, it's definitely snowing up in the mountains. So if we take a look at our snow report, uh, Whitefish Mountain has got five inches of new snow, which has increased their upper and lower base depth to 29 inches and 112 inches. It looks like Blacktail's got six inches of new snow, so their lower base depth is 27 inches to 85 inches. Snowball got zero new inches of snow in the past 24 hours, but they got three inches of new snow in the past 72, so over the past few days. And it looks like Lost Trail has received zero inches of new snow. And Discovery has also received zero inches of new snow, but over the past few days, they got six, six inches. So you can go to onthesnow.com and type in Montana, and you'll find out all the information I just talked about. Yep. But or our season is still going well. Yep. Yeah. Of course, you can log on to our website to find out more information by going on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula why photobomb our two guests. So funny. I yes. love that thumbnail. It, it, it just happened that way, which is perfect. It was perfect, yeah. yeah. And of course, you can find us on our Facebook page, Wake Up Missoula. You can also follow us on our Twitter page. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can check us out on Facebook. And to find out more information, just go to MCAT.org. And mm -hmm. also, you guys, tonight... Over at the Kettle House on the north side from 5 to 8 is our community pint night. So 50 cents from each beer sold goes back to our children's programs that we do on Saturdays and in the summer months. So come on down and drink beer for education. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. Um, um, Kettle House, you know, and plus it's going to be cold. Yeah, so and Scott Stay inside, I, get yeah. warm, thin your blood with some alcohol. Scott and I will be there between like around 5.30 to about 7.30. Yeah, So in between there, there. In between there. So come on down and see us. Yep. <laughs> but of course, uh, you can come and see me on our uh, parade. Oh. Yep. Anytime you want to see us, um, MCAT uh, on our YouTube channel, MCAT TV, um, you can find uh, the parade. And here's a nice little photo of me in front of the MCAT truck I with love handing it. out my snakes. But of course, you wouldn't know, but I am on the hoverboard and I'm flying through like a crazy person. Yeah, I were people like, whoa, hoverboard! The kids were all stoked yeah. to see the hoverboard and they wanted it. Can I have your hoverboard? I was like, no! And then the parents were like, oh my god, please get that hoverboard away from my child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to have one. <laughs> it kind of works like that. Kids love the hoverboard. Mm -hmm. But of course, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, oh. We have Hallmark or Bullmark with a St. Patrick's Day theme. Good. Yes, it would be awesome. <laughs> um, I do have a video I want to show from our stop animation live action video extravaganza thing. Great. And uh, then, of course, we have some city councils to talk about where they're talking a little bit more about the Missoula Mercantile, about how people are kind of getting frustrated with the city. Yeah. 
And, uh, of course, we have Asaph, Musical Notes with Asaph. He's mm-hmm. talking about uh, Flip Williams. We'll, we look forward to that. And, of course, we have um, Noelle with events. Yes. And, of course, she can tell you all you need to know about your St. Patrick's Day events coming up right after this um, clip of new programs uh, featuring um, the Off the Rack show, which Ooh. is premiering tonight at 10 p.m. Yay! So when we come back, we'll have Noelle with events and more. <gasps> And then all of the other property in the state. So think, you know, you got ag lands and you got forest lands and you have railroads and you have airplanes and you have wind generation and you have business equipment and you have pollution control equipment and so forth and so on. And all of those, the remainder add up to uh, $242 million. See that? What just happened? What was going on? <laughs> Missoula is so cray. We have the most cray events ever. Yep. All right. All right. I got some events. Oh, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have some events for you guys. So this is what's going on at, um, today in your community. As it is Wednesday. So we start off with some kids stuff. Uh, over at Spectrum Discovery Area, they've got their optics and, and neurotransmitter necklaces as their discovery bench in their brain lab. So it's at 11. Um, and then also at 11, they have their science sprouts, uh, which is for younger kids between two and five, I believe. Yeah. And they're talking about lucky rainbows. So they'll be kind Sweet. of fun. Yeah. Uh, over the Children's Museum of Missoula, Pet Nebula is going to come in there today at 11 with some creepy crawly animals. And you can learn all about them. Yeah. Over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got Discovering Library Databases starting at 12.30. So from 12.30 to 1.30, uh, this is for um, databases are Novelist Plus and Novelist K through 8 for young readers. So you can learn how to use those databases at the library from 12.30 to 1.30 in the computer classroom. Call 721-2665 to find out more information and to see if you can still register. I mean, it's not until 12.30. I bet you could. Parent Yoga is at Peaceful Heart Yoga at 1 p.m. This is at yoga for you and for your kids. So you can do yoga and then your kids can play. And if you need to, you know, step out and uh, discipline them, you totally can. At the Public Library, we have a couple things going on. <laughs> Open hours in the makerspace from 2 to 6. Uh, you can go in there and work on a project of your choice or just learn how to use their equipment. Uh, and then uh, at 3.30 at the Public Library, they have their middle school writers. It's a writing group for grades 6 through 9. You can go and get, get and give good feedback, play with words, and eat some chocolate. Over at Spectrum Discovery Area, it is Brain Awareness Week. Um, so they've got a bunch of stuff happening starting from at 3.30 until 5. They have guided activities and demonstrations by UM Role Models. Uh, so today features brains and robots. And they're going to be talking about um, how sh- robots can be used to study children. I don't know. Let's see. Hang on. Oh, sh- this woman uses a robot to study how children think. Ah, that sounds scary. <laughs> Keep your robots away from our kids. Okay. Over at the Missoula Art Museum. <laughs> I know I don't even have kids, but whatever. Over at the Missoula Art Museum, they have a teen artist workshop. Um, it's 3D watercolor with Amy Friedman. So it's at four. Four to six materials are provided and it is free. So you can learn how to use a variety of watercolor techniques to create a landscape. And the landscapes will become 3D by cutting, layering, and popping out the foreground, middle ground, and background. Whoa. Uh, Top Hat Lounge has got sharing in the groove. They've got they're celebrating the music of fish. Um, so, so from 4.30 until, I don't know, seven or eight, we've got a fish themed happy hour where they have trivia and they have drink specials and audio show and video show. Uh, okay, show. and then MCAT, we've got our pint night over at the Cuddle House today. So from 5 to 8, 50 cents from each beer sold goes back to our children's programs. So you guys, please come. We'll see you there. 
Uh, at 5.30 over at Missoula Urban Demonstration Project, they've got greenhouse planting and garden planting workshop. Um, and so, let's see, they're just going to teach you how to plan your garden space and what, you know, the best tools to use and how to effectively place everything. Sounds wild. Over the Lifelong Learning Center, they also have a gardening class. They have vegetable gardening class. Uh, in this class, they'll discuss the measure, methods of improving the soil, preparing the vegetable gardening, designing beds, and support structures. Um, and it starts at 6. And, you know, select a variety of flowers and stuff like that. Uh, over at the Rocky Mountain School of Photography, also at 6 p.m. this evening, they have a composition class. Um, and so they will teach you how to align, you know, make your photos look really nice and what to do about um, composition and how to engage the viewer and get people interested in your pictures. Uh, starting at 6 at the Public Library, they've got their jewelry making workshop in their makerspace. So from 2 to 6 is their open time and then from 6 to 7.30 is jewelry making. Over at Natural Grocers, starting at 6 p.m., they are going to be talking about pollen. And so they're going to be talking about foods that you can eat to help with your allergies this spring. Sunrise Saloon has got country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. $5 per lesson, um, and it starts at 7. Over in the UM Gallagher Business Building, room 106, they've got a climate change, emotion, and humanities discussion. Uh, they're going to be talking about, yeah, I don't know, health and humanities, remarks about climate change, and the health implications. Keep our Missoulians healthy. Oh, and then also, you guys, Yonder Mountain String Band is going to be at the Wilma Theater tonight at 8 p.m. They are a, uh, they're bluegrass, and they've been around for quite a while, and they're really good, and they haven't been to Missoula for a while. So they start at 8. I don't know how much their tickets are, but I bet they're, it's like 30-something. Um, and then the Badland at 9, they've got karaoke for a cause. This is for the black and white ball that is on Saturday. They're going to be selling cheaper tickets, so it's 15 bucks for students or $20 for regular. This is the only time that you can get cheap tickets. Normally tickets are 60 bucks for a couple or $40 individual. So if you want to go to the black and white ball, go to karaoke for a cause at the Badlander tomorrow, tonight at 9 p.m. and get your cheap tickets. Uh, that's what's going on in your community. Up next, we're switching gears. We're going ASAP. I'm going to start and do this in a kind of a reverse. We're going to start with the later years of our guest. After our guest did his show, which we'll lead to in a moment, he went on to do um, appearances on variety shows like Here's Lucy with Lucille Ball, The Dean Martin Show, The Ed Sullivan Show, and he credits Ed Sullivan with really boosting his career. In 1976, he appeared as a fox in the television musical called Pinocchio with a dancer named Sandy Duncan. <laughs> yeah. And he's also worked with people of the past, comedians like Danny Kaye, Mr. Geppetto. That was another musical. And these were the later years. Now, leading back, going backwards, our guest is Clero Wilson Jr., known to the world as Flip Wilson. And for your older audience, they'll probably get a kick out of this. Flip Wilson was born in 1933. He is the first African-American comedian actor to ever have a variety show, similar to the Carol Burnett show and some of the other shows of the past. He hosted this on a weekly basis, and it earned him a Golden Globe Award and two Emmy Awards, plus his show has an unprecedented 11 Emmy nominations in the five years that it was on the air. In 1972, they featured him on the cover of Time Magazine as TV's first black superstar. So that's quite an amazing accomplishment. And if we have this clip, let's catch him in action and I'll say a few other things about him. Queen Isabel, Isabel Johnson. <laughs> What's the queen's name? Don't you ask him about this America project. Chris tells him, if I don't discover America, there won't be a Benjamin Franklin or a Star Spangled Banner, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and no Ray Charles. <laughs> Queen heard no Ray Charles, she panicked. <laughs> Queen said, Ray Charles! You gonna burn Ray Charles? Is he in America? Chris said, sure, that's where all those records come from. <laughs> Four queens running through the halls of the castle screaming, Chris gonna find Ray Charles, honey. <laughs> he burned America on that boat. What you say? Quit the love, gonna find Ray Charles. <laughs> she wrote him out a traveler's check. <laughs> Chris ran the local Army Navy store. He bought three used ships, two pair of potatoes, some shades, 
Then he got his other supplies. He got three chicken sandwiches, two cans of Vienna sausage, five cases of scotch, and a small soda. <laughs> ready to leave. The photographers and reporters are at the pier to see him off. All the girls are there. They're all excited and screaming. Goodbye, Columbus. He going on that boat, honey. He going to America. And what was funny about this comedian is that voice that you hear, it was the same female voice for all female characters that he ever played. <laughs> the same voice. Like, uh, for example, he would put a wig on and turn into Geraldine Wilson, who had a boyfriend named Killer. That was one of his classic routines. Another classic routine, besides this one we just saw, um, playing Christopher Columbus, he played Reverend Leroy, too, and that was kind of an amusing character. But, you know, he has some pretty dark beginnings, though. Um, he comes from a family of 10 children during the Great Depression years, and at the age of seven, his mom abandoned the family. So he and some of his siblings wound up in the foster care system at that time. And at the age of 16, he gets into the Air Force, and he was so skilled and funny at his comedy that um, they started using him to go to different barracks to cheer up the soldiers and, and the troops at that time. That's how skilled he was, impromptu stuff. And um, then they said he was so flipped out that he got the name Flip Wilson, and that's how he became Flip Wilson. And he was discharged in 1954. He gets a job as a bellhop at the San Francisco Manor Plaza Hotel, and he gets to do a few-minute comic routine when he took a break, and that's how he got really discovered. And he went on to work on the NBC network. His show opened and debuted in 1970, the Flip Wilson show, and they had like African American entertainers as well as the white entertainers that appeared on the show. I mean, everybody appeared on this man's show, and he just left the world a great legacy with this show, so your audience can always look him up. He's influenced people like George Carlin, Arsenio Hall, Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, and just tons of others that I wouldn't have time to mention. So that's kind of a flyover on the career of Flip Wilson. Nice. Nice. Great. Well, that was Musical Notes with ASAP Adonai. Uh, we're back and we're going to some events for tomorrow. So tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. So I've got a few St. Patrick's Day events. There's mostly stuff happening at night that's related to St. Patrick's Day. Funny, because you know everyone drinks at night. <coughs> Hopefully. <coughs> um, okay. the kids. So you better wear some green tomorrow or else I'm going to pinch you. No, I'm not. I probably will forget to wear green. <laughs> um, over at the Children's Museum tomorrow, starting at 11, they have St. Patrick's Day slime. So they're going to play with some really gross green slime. That sounds awesome. Uh, over the public library, they've got a discussion. It's called Food for Thought, Earn Income Tax Credit. Um, and so they are going to talk about Earn Income Tax Credit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know much more about that. Just go. It's at 12. <laughs> uh, uh, at 1.30, over at 202 Brook Street in room 210 is the North American Mental Illness Alliance Connection Support Group, NAMI, NAMI Missoula. This is a free weekly support group for adults living with mental illness. Uh, over at Missoula Insectarium, they've got an early out. They have marvelous insect mouths. Starting at 3, they're going to learn all about insect mouths, which sounds really gross, but it sounds fun. Yeah. Lego Club is at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. Um, and then we go back across the street to the Missoula Insectarium where they have spider feeding. And they're feeding at Rosie the Chilean Rose Hair Tarantula. Uh, and then over the Zootown Arts Community Center, they have their young artist after school program. It's called Feetastic Art. So they're going to make art with their feet. So it starts Thursdays, um, March 17th to April 28th, 2.15 to 5.00. You can go in there and make art with your feet. That sounds wild. Uh, there's a family fun time at the YMCA uh, at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. So they have softy hockey and scooters and comfy chairs and tables for parents to sit and chill while their kids get crazy. La Grotta Bella has got a downtown drop-in wine tasting at 5 p.m. Uh, 12.50 will get you a minimum of four wines, and there's a different theme each week. Over at Fact and, Fiction, Fact and Fiction, Gwen Florio is reading and signing from her book, Disgraced, at 5.30. Zootown Arts Community Center is hosting Inspire, Create, and Connect. Um, this is a drop-in art class for those individuals that come to work on their own unique projects in the community every third Thursday of the month. 
Learning Center at Red Willow has got a reducing stress and anxiety class at 6 p.m. Uh, from 6 to 8, it's $140. It's five weeks long from March 17th to April 14th. Um, and you learn effective techniques to reduce stress and anxiety. Barn Movement Studio has got an African dance class at 6 p.m. Uh, and then also at 6 over the Radius Gallery, they've got a Dolly Woodblock Prince and Surrealist Talk. Um, and so there are prints on display from a private collection of Jason Neal and Lisa Simon. They are from Dali's powerful series on Dante's The Divine Comedy. Uh, so I don't know if these are originals, but they might be. Um, oh, they are. So there are very few, so they're very real. Oh, wait, maybe they're not originals. I don't know. Um, so they're going to be talking about the historic ideas leading up to the surrounding the concept of surrealism, modernism, Freud, Sassur, W World War One and suffragettes, suffragettes. I don't know. Sounds great. Let me be talking. Uh, okay, and then we've got some St. Patrick's stuff over at St. Anthony Church at 6 p.m. They have a St. Patrick's Day traditional dinner and entertainment. It's fifteen dollars a single, twenty-five dollars a couple, thirty-five dollars a sam for a family. Um, they have bagpiper, Irish dancers, and musicians as well as some food. Also, Charlie B's tomorrow is selling corned beef and cabbage for ten bucks. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's all day long. Yeah. Uh, the Lifelong Learning Center has got a, a beer class. It's called Brewing Your First Batch. It starts at 6 p.m. So if you have your own equipment or are looking for hands-on brewing instruction and recipes, this is a class for you. So you choose your own recipe or try to try a try to true favorite, and then you can bring all your ingredients, equipment, and a lunch to the Saturday class at Sentinel High School. So on Friday, I'll talk more about that. Um, ooh, the Montana Distillery has got Malarkey. Malarkey is playing. They're an Irish band that's playing at 6 p.m. And then over at uh, 3201 Spurgeon Road, this is hosted by the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. They're doing a focus on gulls in an advanced birding class. Um, so wildlife, fish, and what Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, as well as Five Valley Audubon is hosting this. Ooh. Yeah, and so it's $15 per session. You can call 549-5632 to sign up. You're going to be talking about goals. And then the UM Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival is happening this weekend. It starts tomorrow at 7.30, um, so March 17th and 18th. They've got uh, five renowned guest artists, Derek Gardner, trumpet, Erica Von Kleist, saxophone, Gary Hobbs, drum, Marlene Rosenberg, bass, and Reggie Thomas, piano, plus the UM Jazz Band and top high school student musicians. Uh, concerts are at 7.30. Tickets are at the Denison Theater. 10 bucks per student, uh, $15 for senior, $25 in general. There's, let's see, um, yeah, so starts at 7.30 tomorrow. And then there's a whole lot of music. We're getting butte drunk. Woo! I'm just kidding. It actually says yay. Yeah, it says yeehaw. I know. Sometimes I like to write out notes for myself to see what I'm going to say. Uh, but this is all the music that's going on tomorrow night. So Clear Grain, Clear Grain will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 8. Open Mic at the Eagles at 8.30. Open Mic at the Broadway at 9. Dead Hipster at the Badlander at 9. Karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9. Uh, there will be a bass St. Patrick's Day at Stage 112 at 9. Uh, St. Patrick's Day Party featuring yokel, lo local yokel at the Top at Lounge at 10. And then Mudslide Charlie's plays every year at Charlie Bees uh, at 10 o'clock during St. Patrick's Day too, and they're really rowdy. Charlie Bees get very rowdy on St. Patrick's Day, um, but that's what's going on in your community. Check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana, the Independent, or the Missoulian for more events. But of course, it is uh, time for some city council, guys. So yeah. you might want to bear with me just for a couple <laughs> quotes. So I'm talking a little bit more about the Missouri Mercantile, as in terms of like we have more quotes from more mm -hmm. people, and of course, uh, this is this kind of shows exactly kind of how uh, this this is a reflection of how um, people view this city and how they're kind of they've been kind of um, just kind of quick. Maybe they're a little too quick with uh, finding um, the quicker solution rather than the right solution. Mm. So this is, um, ooh, who is this guy? Uh, this is uh, <laughs> Jeff Stevens, and he's talking about the Missoula Merc and how the truth was flexible and how many local interests had no advantage yeah. in the first place. Colossal failure to communicate. The deal was dead. When failed corporate developers decide to get out of Dodge, the optimistic press releases dry up. This is followed by a period of ominous silence, followed by the swift application of an axe. The axe had come in the form of home base Montana. 
engineering studies and financial feasibility studies seem to be wonderfully flexible things. So apparently is the truth. They can apparently be purchased and tailored to suit a pre predetermined outcome agreeable to the purchaser. Homebase bought itself a set of studies that seem to completely contradict all previous studies. How delightfully convenient for them. So basically um, what um, Stevens is saying is um, that the city of Missoula had all these um, assessments done on the building. They gutted it, they cleaned it and everything mm -hmm. else. And um, a lot of these assessments said that the building was up to code and it yeah. was just right. And then coincidentally, home base, as soon as they wanted to build and stuff, the, um, the resources that provided, they, they took their own experts to look at the building and do a feasibility study and apparently it wasn't good and up to code. So one, either one is lying or one is just doesn't know yeah. what they're doing. Or maybe, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Maybe it's up to code in certain standards. Maybe it, we were at a Montana standard versus the national standard. Because one Which, of the most common things yeah. in um, the state of Montana, and even a lot of other um, um, poverty mm -hmm. um, states, is that our building codes are very low. It, yeah. And like even our school systems here in town are uh, have a D plus just because of our buildings. Totally. Well, and that's Montana standard. Like, honestly, also, like, if that's good enough for Montana, it's, then why does, then it's good enough? Like, why do we have to have some company telling us that it's not? That's obviously has their own best interests, not the interests of Missoula. Yeah, which brings us to our next quote. This is uh, Darla Torres, and she is very disappointed with the city and how they've handled um, this, um, this deal that just kind of went through. And it... So I'm not going to waste my comment time here because I was under the impression that we were actually going to have a meeting about the Merck. Um, so what I want to know is when there's going to be an actual meeting about the Merck and not just like a planning meeting so we can find out about the plans for the Merck, but where the community can actually talk about how we feel about the demolishment of the Merck because this is a really shady deal. This is a backdoor shady deal um, and I'm really disappointed in all of you, especially you, because you're supposed to be progressive, and this is not a progressive thing to do, and you're betraying my children. So I want. All right. So um, that's what she had to say. And so the deal did go through, and they're demolishing the Merck, and they're going to go with this. Well, they're looking through the plan, and they're trying to get the paperwork through. And um, once they get the paperwork through, they're going to work on it going forward with it. It's just going to ruin our downtown. It's just going to be so ugly. It's going to. It be doesn't like, fit in because a no. lot of the new buildings that get built just don't really don't fit in. No, you got and the like, new Stockman Bank. It's probably, it probably doesn't really look like it's going to no, fit in. Uh -uh. But then again, um, then you got that new building, the um, Gardner Garnaker building. Mm -hmm. That's just the new building across from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. That kind of looks kind of stands out. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because our downtown looks historic. It looks old. It's got that old vibe and old feel to it. So some new brand new Marriott just yeah. in the middle of our downtown is just going to look really weird. It's going to be huge. It's going to be ugly. It's going to it's not going right. to do anything to benefit our community or Missoula whatsoever. Yes, but uh, one of the things that I, I brought up the other week when I went on my little rant yeah, that's is great. that um, one of the things that Missoulians have not done is uh, the last six years is not actually is, have, have a progressive anything, solution yeah. to what to do with the Merc rather than just have it there and waste the people's money who actually owns the building. Yeah. And not be happy with them, whatever step they take. So, anyways, this is Kayla Blackman, and she talks about some of the, the solutions that we can do, all while keeping the Missoula Mercantile the way it is. A really varied community of people who are really, really interested in the future of this building, and not only of the building, but of the Missoula downtown. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that over the last week, they have been, we all have been posting different. Um, links to buildings that have been rehabilitated, different business models that we think could be the right solution for Missoula and for the mercantile. And so um, hopefully I will continue to keep reporting back and let you know that that support is still going strong. So as of this week, we've reached about 30,000 people. And um, we would really also look forward to the opportunity to m maybe meet with you and kind of give some of those ideas of voice so all right so of course that's what she had to say about that and of course she was talking about their facebook page which i believe is the uh, uh save the mercantile web page and i cool. do I, I do want to see if i can find it real quick if yeah. you guys can just yeah hold off a so second. so what's kind of interesting about the mercantile is that you know missoula's kind of works like this like no one wants to do anything until something drastic is about to happen and then everyone is like oh, 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 oh. 
So, you know, they have to do something with it. It's been sitting open for six years. They've gutted it. They've assessed it. Like, it's been, you know, there's been a lot of opportunity and a lot of time for them to do something. And so now that this in company has expressed interest, which, you know, like, I don't think that they should, you know, that they should demolish it. Um, but now everyone is just up in arms. So it's kind of interesting how, like, it gets drastic and people have to get for something drastic to happen for people to respond. Uh, what do you think about that, Asa? I don't know. Do you, do you agree where like some usually like people respond when like most drastic things happen? I'd say so. Yeah. And so since it's been dormant, you know, and we've all just been like chilling our, in our Missoula vibe and our Missoula way, it's, it's, you know, it's just stayed open. It's pretty much just like an art space or they have, it's just like advertising in the windows. Yeah. So it would be nice for them um, to do it. Did you... I don't, I don't know if he's found it. Oh, I, I couldn't find it on Facebook, <laughs> no. but I did find uh, um, a couple of people commenting about if they should save the Merc or not. And of course, um, here are some of the comments. Uh, um, indoor market or apartment building. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, this is from Zach. This is their family used to shop there all the time. And no matter how um, sad it needs to go from a structural point, it would just take too much work to fix it up. And honestly, they could care less who builds there as long as they have jobs for local employees. That's just kind of the comments that you've been reading on Facebook and stuff like that. Yeah, most yeah, people that, just... most people are just kind of like they've known the Merc for so, such a long time, and it's just like it's kind of like it's really sad that we're just kind of seeing it go to waste. But that's kind of like um, yeah. there's not much to say about the Merc. There's just um, every, everything that's been said has been said, and they they do hopefully I don't know when they're gonna have a meeting or they're actually even gonna talk about it because it seems like it's pretty much already, already forward. Yeah, uh, they're gonna move forward on this whole mercantile thing. Mm. It just I just think that the mayor should have really thought about the aesthetic and how it's just not going to fit in with yep. Missoula. It's just not going to fit in with our downtown. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be it's going to be like a sore thumb sticking out. But of it course, really you can find out how you can watch um, the whole meeting and more by logging on to www.ci.missoula.mt.us or you can go to the Google and type in City of Missoula <laughs> and you can go to, I'll zoom in, you go to your government and you go to um, agendas, webcasts, and minutes. It should be right about here. You click on it, and then it'll show you this nice little page, and it'll give you a list of all the meetings and all the stuff. It takes a minute to come up. Yeah. So one thing you can always look for is you can see the agendas of upcoming meetings, and you can see um, the videos. Of course, if they already happened, you can see the past videos and more of all your uh, archived city meetings, which is, it's a nice, it's a nice resource that really I use it's constantly. Great. And it's just easy, like if you guys don't want to go to a city council meeting or just want to find out what's going on with city council, it's a great way to go in there and check it out. And also, what you can do is you can like, if they have like, and they're itemized on their page where it shows the video, you can like click on each different mm -hmm. section and it'll take you to that video. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. But of course, uh, um, I'm going to uh, alleviate the tension that's in the air right now by showing a nice little fun video that I made with some of the kids from our stop animation drop-ins every Saturday from 1 to 5. And it's only $10 to drop off your kids, grandkids or whatever. And, you know, it, it keeps them busy and off those drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and we're great influences. Yeah. <laughs> we are, though. Yeah we, yeah. we totally are. I'd say we are. Oh, we're pretty good. I think we're really yeah, good we're influences. Really good. Yeah. 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 And we're humble too. All right. <laughs> Without further ado, here is Waterboy, but scarier. Ooh. Oh crap, there's no cups left. Oh, I can help. What? Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, uh, no one understands me. Creeping cup guy. 
Some people just can't take no as an answer. Yeah, especially that green-hatted cup person thingy that had a chew it up cup. Ugh, never mind. You're welcome to hang out with us. Until you feel safe. Thanks, guys. Well, do you guys want to go play dollies at my house like grown-ups think we would do? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, so where are your dollies? This is how I play dollies. Sometimes my dollies tell me to do mean things to mean people. Oh, okay. Is there anything about you? I have puppies. I love puppies. I never said anything about loving puppies. Okay. Then, where did Iris go? Hmm. Well, I better get home and feed my dog list fur trees. not want to cause any trouble here. Neither do we. So that's a little bit creepy. <clears throat> They're so much fun, and they're so cute, and they just, I, I just love them. That was great. That was really funny. And now it's time for one of our favorite games to play, oh. Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> I like how you said that all sassy. Oh my gosh, Scott, you look so sassy. I look very sassy, and me and my tiny hat, this hat is way too small. But <laughs> these headphones really help you keep it on. It looks good. I like it. I, I think it looks great, and yeah. I like all these little rhinestones. Scott, bedazzling. you look so I'm good. bedazzling. You guys, look how good he looks. I look pretty darn good. You do. Yeah. We're really humble. <laughs> Very humble. All right, so, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hallmark Bullmark. Hallmark Bullmark. Okay. No, no, no. So we have a... Uh, St. Patrick's Day themed Hallmark or Bullmark. So if you guys don't know how this game works, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you have to determine whether or not it's a real movie or not. I don't know. It's, it's up to you guys. Are you guys ready? <coughs> All right. Hit it, ASAP. It's St. Patrick's Day, and Mary is feeling homesick for her home in Ireland. Her boyfriend, Michael, is out of town on business, and she has no reason to stick around town when a rare opportunity presents itself in the form of a global Trek television project, Mary jumps on board. With a major learning curve and awkward interviews, Mary seems like she'll never be able to go home to Ireland. But just when she was about to be fired, her awkwardness has sparked viral videos that have the television company exploiting her. Will Mary sacrifice her dignity just so she can go home? And the movie's called Cheers for St. Patrick's Day. A Hallmark original movie, or is this complete bullmark? Oh, man. Mm. I'm going to say bullmark. You're going to say bullmark? Yeah, what do you think, Asa? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Noel on yeah. that. I'm going to say bullmark. <laughs> you guys are right. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, you guys ready for your uh, your next yes. um, Hallmark or Bullmark challenge? Oh, I'm so scared. All right, okay. here it is. <laughs> American mom Lily McDougal and Irish dad Connor McDougal, both single parents, arrive with their children at a resort in the Scottish countryside. Um, though they are unrelated, a mix-up in a reservation desk um, forces both families to share one cabin. Oh my god. The strong-minded Lily and Connor quarrel over everything until they must join forces and work together as a single team to win a contest hosted by the resort. <laughs> the movie's called The Cabin. Is this a Hallmark original movie or is this complete bullmark? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, mm. 
St. Patrick's themes. I know. What do I? What does my gut tell you? Do you think Hallmark original movies make St. Patrick's Day yeah. movies? I would hope. God, they make everything else. <laughs> I'm gonna say Bullmark again. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Hallmark. You say Hallmark? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the first. Well, usually um, Asaph never says Hallmark. He always yeah. says Bullmark just to like. No, we just doubt you all the time. He doubts me all the time. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, this time he wins. <gasps> oh. Yes, because okay. it is a Hallmark original movie. All right. And it star and it stars uh, Lee Thompson, who is the uh, the um, the mother of Michael J. Fox and Back to the Future. You know that okay. whole like oh, weird okay. incest mama. Something. Wow. Yeah. So, Lucky guess. That was a total guess. I, I had nice. no way of knowing. Good nice. job, guys. And thanks for playing. And thanks for joining us for Wake Up Missoula. We have uh, we yeah. had a really good time here today. <laughs> we had a lot to talk about. We had a lot to show, and a, definitely a lot to tell. We cried. We laughed. We cheered. <laughs> Wake Up Missoula. I laugh. <laughs> Unless there's a Pixar movie playing, then I'm not crying. Actually, Anyways, really so <laughs> without further ado, you can find out more information about us by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. You could like us on a Facebook page. Oh, someone just liked us. Yay! You could uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, you could totally follow... Oh, Oh, you can like MCAT on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can check MCAT out on Facebook. You can like us on MCAT. Dot org to find out more information about us. You yep. can't like us. Well, you can like us in real life, but this is where you go to find out more info yes. on us. It doesn't cost you, it doesn't make you click to like us. No, you it does have to. You just can yeah. like us like in your own life. Mm-hmm. But we'll be on YouTube. We'll be again on today, um, this afternoon at 2 p.m. Yep. Uh, and of course, if you see this at 2 p.m., then this won't make sense. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have uh, an upcoming show, Rally or Cause, and you want to be on our show to talk about it, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. Or you can email us, MCAT at MCAT.org. And you guys, don't forget, our pint night at, Mizzou, at uh, Northside Kettle House is tonight. That is at, uh, from 5 to 8, 50 cents from each beer sold goes back to our children's programs that we do on Saturdays and in the summer months. Cool. And Scott and I will be there between 5.30 and about 7.30. In between there. All right. Yeah. So you can find us there. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Noah McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's Asaph at 09. <laughs>